Hello guys, this is Bet the Tech, and if you're watching this video, you probably are about to take the Security Plus soon. You're learning about the Security Plus, thinking, hey, do I need to take this? What should I do? I'm going to outline everything in this video. I'm going to give you guys two learning paths that actually fits your study a path a little easier. Some people learn with video courses, some people learn by reading books, things like that, and I want to kind of tailor it to you so you can kind of go through your path. So I'm going to go over where I'm coming from. I have the A plus and the network plus, as well as I've been learning cybersecurity here and there. I have about like a mid-level IT role currently. And so I'm not coming from absolute zero. And so it might be a little easier for me to study. But again, it's really only going to dictate the pace and how fast you study for the exam. If you get through everything that I'm going to outline in these learning paths, then you should be prepared to take the exam and pass it on your first try at the end of it. The only thing that's going to change is how fast you do it, whether you do it in two weeks all the way to three months. I don't recommend taking more than 90 days just because if you go over it, then you are spending a, a little time being lackadaisical and maybe thinking and pushing it too far. Uh, if you start studying now and you wait six months to take the exam, a lot of the stuff that you, you started studying for now, you'll probably forget all the way then. And so we want to kind of tackle this quickly. You might have to say no to going out or you might have to say no to that one thing and kind of put your head to the grindstone in these next 90 days to two weeks, however long you're going to take and get the certification done. And I really recommend getting the certification. It's probably going to be that next big jump, especially in the DOD space. So my channel is called Veta Tech. If you have a clearance with the Security Plus, that's like you're almost guaranteed a job at that point as long as you can pass an interview and do well in terms of portraying your skills and, and your personality. And so again, security plus study, get rid of distractions and get it done. All right. So a little bit about the prerequisites. CompTIA says that you should have the A plus and network plus prior to taking the exam. You don't necessarily have to. I recommend at least knowing that knowledge or at least knowing the foundations. So a good resource is the Google IT support professional certificate on Coursera. And that kind of, again, just combines everything that you need to know like in the A plus and network plus, but a little bit less. And so it's not exactly as if you were to take those certifications and study for them, but it gets you enough to the point where you can come into security plus knowing your things, knowing things like port numbers, knowing things like operating systems and, and mobile devices, things like that, just so you can kind of get started. And I recommend that course specifically, but you can use anything else. Just study A plus and network plus. Don't get the certs if you don't have to. So here I'll go over the, the first learning path that I'm going to kind of let you guys in on. This is the one that I used. And so the first thing that I did was watch a video course. The specific video course that I used is the Mike Myers or Total Seminar or Security Plus 701. It's not necessarily the best one, but it's the one I went through and I would recommend it as I passed the exam and it helped me go through it. That's on Udemy, which is a paid resource, or you can get it free through Digital University if you're active or reserve or National Guard military. You can also get Udemy license through business, through your job or other things. And so I would look into that to see if there's any way you can get a free license. If not, then you can go ahead and use Professor Messer and that's free on YouTube as well. Some of the difference between the two is the Total Seminars video course is a little more engaging. And so if you're kind of sit down and watch two or three hours of a course in a row, if you just have that much time and you're going to watch it, it, it's pretty good. It keeps you engaged. It has quizzes between every chapter. And then they have like real life examples that go over like showing pictures and videos and on things on and kind of lets you see things in real life versus Professor Messer. I would recommend it if again, it's the free version, but I would recommend it if you're going to maybe take time on a commute or you're on a walk and you just want to listen to the course. I think his courses work better in an audio only format. He does do like a PowerPoint presentation in terms of his videos, but they're mostly audio. And so there's not that much of a visual component to it. And so you can get through it or 30 minute commute to work. Boom. You got 30 minutes of studying out of the day and you can, you can kind of get that with Professor Messer, not necessarily total seminars course because it is visual and you should keep your eyes on the road for that as the second resource took Mike Myers practice exams. I think they did me pretty well. I got about, I averaged about an 82 out of the three practice exams that are on Udemy. And that got me a score of 70, 71. And so with the video course and the practice test in combination, those were able to kind of get me that score. And I think I did pretty well. Again, you want to have like a learning resource and then finish it off with a test or verification of your knowledge. And a free version, if you don't have Udemy, 
There is examcompass.com and they have practice tests on the CompTIA 701 already out. But the difference with these questions is that they're not necessarily worded in the CompTIA format. And so the way that CompTIA formats uh, their questions, they kind of put it into a, a scenario. And so with the CompTIA exam compass practice test, they're more of like definition answer type of practice tests. And so it's not going to be as genuine or as valuable, I would say, um, to kind of prepare you exactly for what you'd be looking for on the test. So if you have the, the few bucks, I think all of these Udemy courses, you can probably find them each for less than 20 bucks. And so I would say specifically for this, you might want to, to kind of pay for that or, or borrow someone's license or figure out a way to get it because these practice tests are, are really useful in terms of being similar to the exam to get you through it. But now we're moving on to the second learning path. So the second learning path is some people can't learn through like an audio visual video course. And the best way for them to learn is through one of these bad boys. So I personally recommend the Security Plus Get Certified, Get Ahead 701 Study Guide by, who is it by? Daryl Gibson and Joe Shelley. Again, you want to tailor it to your learning style. So if you were in, let's say in school, you did well by reading textbooks over watching video courses or watching like lectures and things like that, then you might favor doing this. I know for me personally, if I try to sit through a textbook, I'll have to like reread a page like 20 times before I actually get it in my head. And that's just how I work. And so I know I would never be able to get through that book as long as I tried. Even if I did, it would probably take me like two years to get through it. And so that's why I prefer the video course over that. But some people do prefer the textbook. It makes it easier. You can go slow. You can go through the whole book, take notes, highlight, things like that. Some people prefer that. And if that's your learning style, do that. Another perk about the book is that it has two practice exams attached to the book. And so you can go ahead and flip through. It's near the back. You, you can kind of review your knowledge and, and gauge how you're doing on the practice test with those. I would use them in conjunction with either another resource, like I said, either Exam Compass or Mike Myers' Udemy practice tests. I, I would recommend always having at least a double verification. So Exam Compass and Mike Myers practice tests or the book and exam compass or the book and Mike Myers, just again, to kind of gauge where you're at. If you're, if you're doing pretty low on scores, you can kind of tell like if you would fail, like if you're getting below a 70, below 75, uh, I would recommend to kind of just redo something else. I wouldn't go through the video course again, the same video course. I would probably try to get another resource just because not all of them are made the same and you don't want to necessarily learn the same things when there could be some slight overlap between another course and, and you can kind of go through that. For this, there isn't necessarily a way to get one of these books for free. Just again, I'd recommend the physical copy, but you could get an ebook and the ebooks are cheaper on Kindle. They're cheaper, but you could also go through a local library and get and get one of these books through there as well. That's another way to get this free if, if you absolutely needed to. It is difficult to probably try to find a free version if not through that way. And then again, with both of the two learning resources, we're going to finish it off with Cybercraft's PBQs that can be found on YouTube. He has a, a YouTube playlist that goes over some of the performance-based questions that you'll find on the exam. He kind of goes over the CERT Master Lab questions that are provided on CompTIA, and, and he'll go over those things, and they're similar to what you'd find on the exam. Not exactly, of course, but uh, this is one of the only resources that I found that I would actually help you study for the PBQs. Believe it or not, like there's not that much that would actually help you. That's free. If you want to pay for it, you can go ahead and pay for the Cert Master Labs yourself. And that'll give you all the specific CompTIA labs and performance-based questions that you can go ahead and, and do when you're studying for the test. And then again, so Cybercraft free, Cert Master Labs on CompTIA paid. All right, so that's how I prepared for the exam. I'm going to give you actual tips on what to do during the exam. And so I took A+, plus, Network+, plus, and now Security+. Plus. And so during the exam, I was pretty confident just because if once you've gone through the CompTIA system before, you kind of know what you're expecting. You know that the, the questions are going to trick you. Something specific to do is just skip the performance-based questions out of the gate. However many you get, you might get one, two, three, four. I think you can get up to five. Just skip them and start the multiple choice questions. And this is the best way to, to kind of manage your time during the exam. I know for me, I can get stumped on the performance-based questions and, and you can spend 
two, three, four, five, ten minutes on one PBQ question. And so you want to make sure you get through all of the individual multiple choice questions before you go through and do the PBQs. And so the way I did it was I skipped PBQs and I started multiple choice. And then any of the questions that I that I really like, I know I didn't absolutely know the answer, I flagged them. And so I think I flagged like maybe 30% of the questions. Like I use that flag button pretty sparingly just because there are a lot of the times where once you, you read a different question, it'll kind of spark something in your mind and then it'll give you the answer to the question that you had before. And so that's one of the benefits of being able to go back and check your flagged questions is just flag. If, you, if you're not 100%, flag it. And so you can go back as long as you, you kind of go through every question pretty quick. You don't want to spend more than like more than a minute, minute and a half on any one question on the multiple choice side. Just if you don't know, choose an answer and then skip it. The CompTIA format is more than likely there'll be two answers that are a little unrelated and then two answers that answer the question, but that when they ask the question, they're asking something specific. And so they're going to ask you what is best or which one should you do first? And, and you want to look at how that's worded in terms of is it the best format? Is it the one that needs to be done as fast as possible? Is it the one that's the second in the order that you should do things? Things like that. So you want to read um, the question and that that should hopefully let you decide between the two correct answers. Uh, some questions will just be pretty easy to answer and they'll only have one right answer. But a lot of them, you can get them down to two pretty easily and then read the question multiple times to get an understanding of what they're specifically asking you. And once you get through all the multiple choice, go back to the PBQs. And here you can kind of relax and spend a decent amount of time, go through the PBQs and then go through all your flagged questions. And then at that point, you should either be wrapping up, you shouldn't have any more time or you should have had everything and you're, you're pretty comfortable in, in terms of submitting. But again, I usually take most of the time throughout the exam. I know for my A plus and my network plus, I took all 90 minutes. Um, for this, I was a little more confident. The more experience you have with the CompTIA format, you, you'll, you'll kind of gain experience. I'm like, okay, I think I'm doing pretty well versus I know the first time I took a CompTIA exam, I knew I failed. I absolutely knew when I hit submit, I failed, but turns out I passed. And you probably will feel that that like, uh, I don't know if I'm passing or if I'm failing, just do the best. Don't give up throughout the exam. Continue to kind of have that momentum of choosing the correct answers and keeping your head up. One specific thing that I realized when I was taking the exam that I wish I had studied more was the risk management objectives. And so all of the other keywords and, ad and kind of concepts are all pretty distinct in what they, they sound like. So you can kind of, you can tell the answer just based off of remembering the acronym or remembering what that concept was. But risk management topics kind of bamboozled me a bit because they're very similar. So things like the difference between RTO and RPO or the difference between MTTR versus MTBR, they sound very similar. And in my head, when I was taking the exam, they, I feel like I definitely mixed them up. I, I even saw on my like screen report on what questions I got wrong. They were there were a, a decent amount on the risk management portion. And so I want to make sure you kind of drill that into your head, the differences between those, because once you see them on your exam, it's easy to get them mixed up. Other than that, I hopefully wish you well on the exam. I hope you take the exam. I hope you study for the exam. I hope you pass it on your first try. Only a few small percentage of you who are actually watching will get that done, but I believe in you. I want to see you guys write in the comments on my other videos. Hey, I got security plus and I found a job or I got security plus and I got promoted or something like that. That's what I'm looking for. And I really hope you do well on your journey and like, and subscribe. We'll be putting more videos out in the future for different certifications. Don't necessarily know what certification I'm going to do next, but I'm thinking maybe a cloud, maybe CCNA, maybe SANS, things like that. And so hopefully you guys should be getting another video out of me pretty here, pretty soon here. And I'll see you guys on the flip side.